we see in Bujbim as a creation being, as this, as this giant, this man who would walk across the land. In a fit of rage, he sat up and he spat out his blood and his teeth across the land. When the volcano Bujbim erupted, it brought new life to this area in southwestern Victoria. For millennia, winding channels created by lava were carved and used to trap, store and harvest kuyang, short-finned eel. This is one of the oldest aquaculture systems in the world. How do we create this channel in the first place? The importance of the eel traps meant that we could trade with everyone. It meant that we had food source year round. It means we could permanently live in this area. Now the site supports another industry, tourism. My name is Ruben, I'm a Kire Wadong man with Palawa ties. Bujbim was the first site in Australia to be World Heritage listed solely for its Aboriginal cultural significance. Now Victoria is working on another first, a treaty. Every single day we're just getting more of a say and being thrust more into the spotlight of our stories being heard. We've done the hard work here in Victoria. We've made sure we've put all the steps in place to have this process with that bipartisan support. Gunjit Maraman Ruben Berg is co-chair of the First People's Assembly, an elected body tasked with negotiating a statewide treaty. At the moment, there are lots of decisions that the state makes that directly affects us, and we see, sadly, they're not leading to the best outcomes. We want to see some of those decisions transferred over to First Peoples. It's not clear yet what the treaty will look like. Elders and youth are being brought together to talk ahead of negotiations starting likely early next year. We want to know what people want to see in the treaty and we want to get people to think about what they should have in a treaty. We're strong once we all we come together. Hearing everyone's voice today is important and that's listening from our young ones as well. I want to be a part of the treaty when I'm older. Those are the elders and once they're gone, we've got to step up. The treaty could cover things like land management, social services or reparations. The Assembly doesn't have a fixed view around that. We'll continue to have discussions with our community. And importantly, just because we come up with a position as well, that doesn't auto automatically mean that that's what we can get out of the negotiations. They're negotiations. It takes both parties sitting at the table to reach an agreement. I know the Treaty of Waitangi. They're on the sixth iteration of their treaty. A board is being recruited to act as an umpire and the state government has set aside more than $80 million for preparations. We've just got to get uh, our mob you know, informed and educated enough and getting the treaty ready um, is, the, is, is my biggest thing. Um, and hopefully when we get to that table, we are ready, we are informed. With the Yurok um, Commission that's going on at the moment, will you take what they find? Victoria is also leading the nation on truth-telling. The Yurok Commission has held historic hearings and made several recommendations, including significantly reforming the justice system. But there's no guarantee they'll be adopted by government. What's happening here in Victoria has become a talking point in the referendum debate. And some of those who are opposed to the voice have also warned against a national treaty. Those involved in the process here say they aren't taking the bipartisan support they have for granted. Being on country means oh, everything to me. Um, on my grandmother's country, it centres me. The First People's Assembly says it's confident of treaty success, regardless of the referendum outcome. Because we need to move and we need to go in a different direction, and we've got to do something. Natalie Whiting, ABC News.